Good evening, good evening. Y'all give God a hand of praise. Say amen. But God is truly worthy to be praised. Amen. We are here today, uh, joined together for another Wednesday in the Word and the Lord. We want you guys to, to come on in, come on in, come on in, and we want you to, when you come in, to share this video with other people. Amen. Share this video with your uh, family, your friends. Like I always say, even your enemies, amen? So share, make sure you share this video so not only you can get God's word, but they can receive God's word also, amen? We have a dynamic team here today. We're going to have a dynamic prayer, dynamic worship service and song. And we're going to have a dynamic word and teaching, amen? So we want you to join along. We want you to have a good time, amen? We want you to really learn what God has to say to you today, amen? Because we live in such a world... Where, where things are hectic, things are going crazy, amen? Everybody has their own opinions about this. But what does God say? What is God, what is God telling you today? How can God help you in your life today, amen? Also, we want you to be aware that you can still give, amen? If you want to give offerings, give your tithes early. If you just want to give to be a, a blessing to our church, amen? You can give to give a fly. You will see that in the comments below. Amen. We just want you to truly be blessed today, amen? So right now we're going to uh, have a scripture read by Sister Ashley, and after that we'll come with uh, prayer. Amen? Amen.
said he's grateful for a job and, and a mom and, and the Lord. All right. Sister Delma Smith, she said, God and family, listen. God and family are woo, important. important. Even with a brother like Dayton, I'm just kidding. Ah. <laughs> you know, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm kidding, Pastor. <laughs> All right, um, yes. Anybody else? Come on, Rich, you got tea? Uh, transportation in my mind. Transportation in my listen, in my mind. Mm. Transportation in my mind. <laughs> Listen, you about to be shouting in here. Listen. In my mind. Well. All right, so let's go ahead and continue. So let's go ahead and um, dig into the scripture. We're going to start with Psalms chapter 95. We're going to read 1 through 7, right? Here we go. I'm going to read it. Oh, come, let us sing unto the Lord. Now, I'm asking our questions. See, I better be listening. I'm asking our questions. Now, it's an open book test, so let's look at your scriptures. Amen? All right. Oh, come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving. And make a joyful noise unto him with songs. For the Lord is a great God and a great king above all little G gods. In his hands are the deep places of the earth. The strength of the hills is his also. The sea is his and he made it, and his hand formed the dry land. Oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our maker, for he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Today, if he will, hear his voice. Amen? Amen. So let's start with some. Y'all can type out. Now listen, if y'all hear it out in the atmosphere, but you know it, go ahead and still type it, all right? I want to make sure y'all participate. All right? So now my question is what are the two specific expressions of praise was the psalmist talking about in these scriptures? He said at the very beginning. God in these scriptures. 
They have a two in verse one. They have one in verse three. They have two in verse three. They have about one. No, they have, yeah, they have two in verse one. One. Yep. About one and two in verse three, about one in verse six. Now y'all can answer out there too. What are the five, you can get five, five titles that are given to God in these scriptures? Rock. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, rock. Yeah. I don't know, but you know, we can keep on going. What does this, what does this say all together? Rock of our salvation. Yes, the rock of our salvation. What a foundation, huh? Okay. Amen. Somebody else? And it can be simple. It doesn't have to be all deep. It's right in the scripture. He gave us one. You said one? King. King, huh? He said the king of all small little G gods. Anybody else? Give me two more. They're very easy. I think y'all don't have to think too hard. There's, there's another one in verse 3. At the beginning of verse 3. Lord. Lord. Maker. Maker. Lord our maker. Yep. Great. Yeah. Say it again. Great. Great what? God. Great God. Hey, y'all. When you think about these, don't you want to go into a moment where God is deserving of something that's coming from you? Amen. You know what I mean? When you think about um, Lord, when you think of rock of my salvation, when you think about great God, when you think about king of all gods, when you think about Lord, our maker, Wow, how can you know all these things and not give God some type of praise? Am I saying you have to shout and dance and run all over church? No. But even a smile. Let me smile. Okay. Because some of y'all just frowned up for no reason. Huh. Huh. Left highly favored and frowned up. Huh. God is too good to be in church frowned up. Right. Listen, just imagine. You are in the front of a church ministering, and somebody looks like a mad dog. Mm. Listen, is God not good? Like I said, no, I'm not asking you to pick your feet up. I'm not asking you to do all that. But listen, if you know God is good, now we got masks on too, so, but it can be in your eyes. I'm just kidding. All right? So thank you guys for participating. Listen to this. Another question. I already said it. Yeah, so listen, I'm going to read this. The psalmist, do you guys know who the psalmist is of Psalm who we're talking about? Okay. All right, David. He says, listen, as often elsewhere stirs up himself, the psalmist does, he stirs up himself and he stirs up what? Other people to praise God. Right? Mm -hmm. right? He, you know, he's trying to hype us up. Come on, y'all, right? For it is our duty which ought to be performed with the most likely affections, and which we have great need to be excited for. If you ain't excited about what God is doing, you call yourself a Christian, check yourself. I mean, come on, listen. Not being very often backwards or cold to it. Spiritually, listen, spiritual joy is the heart and the soul of a thankful praise. I'm going to say that again. A spiritual joy is the heart and the soul of a thankful praise. If God has got, if you got that joy, 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 joy down in my what? Heart, soul, right. If you have that joy down in there, how can you not praise him? Listen, it is the will of God. Such is... Um, the condensation of his grace. 
that we, that when we give him glory, glory to him, as being incident, perfect, and blessed, we should at, at the same time rejoice. Rejoice in him as our father and king. And listen, and a God in covenant with us. Are you in covenant with God? Are y'all happy to be in covenant with God? Amen. Are y'all happy to be in covenant with God? Amen. Wow, he's such an amazing God. Amen. Amen. Yes, it is. All right, so now I'm going to ask y'all to turn to the second book. We're going to go to... Um, Colossians chapter 2, verses 6 and 7. Yeah. Yep, Colossians 2, verses 6 through 7. They don't have to read that for me, those two verses. <laughs> Colossians chapter 2, verses 6 through 7. Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him, rooted and built up in him, and uh, step, established in the faith as ye have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. Amen. All right. Listen, I hope y'all really listen to what that, those verses are saying. I have a question now, so y'all can... I know that's right, Sister Monica. He is good. Amen. Amen. All right. So, question How does living for Christ demonstrate an attitude of thanksgiving to God? How does living for Christ demonstrate an attitude of thanksgiving to God? How does living, I should say, how does your living, huh? Can we make that personal? Yeah. How does living for Christ demonstrate an attitude of thanksgiving to God? That changed my life. Yeah. Uh, I'm sick, and all the bad things I was doing, and I'm so grateful that I came out of that, out of that, a sinful nature, to a uh, to a Christ-like uh, nature that I can be so grateful to God. For yes, that's right. You can demonstrate that in the life that's been changed. Amen. Amen. You can demonstrate that in the life that's been changed. The sad part is, I, I, I see it. Um, when the pastor said, "Go to church." Mm -hmm. Amen. It's so sad. Some of us. Um, can walk around half of our lives and people not even know we're Christians. That's right. Now work on that. That's right. Because we believe that God strengthened us, doesn't he? Right. And how is he talking about it? Like, um, I like this. Listen to this. Amazingly, the Christian life continues the same way it began, by faith in Jesus. Our entire lives will be successful if we live out of our union with Christ said about them not in our life in Christ. Listen, in, in this passage, the Apostle Paul, now he's the writer of this passage, right? The Paul gives three practical ways describing how we are to live continually in Christ. Does anybody know what they are? I'll read, I'll read the scripture again and then I ask that question. As ye have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in him, rooted and built up in him, and established in the faith, as ye have been taught, 
about me therein with thanksgiving, with thanksgiving. So many. So I ask again, does anybody know some of the, the, the three practical ways describing how we are to live continuously in Christ? What does Paul say? Uh huh. Walk. Yeah, that's right. One is walk in Him. What's the, what's the other one? Be a witness for Him. Anybody else? Have you right? Um, established in the faith. But what does it say at the beginning of verse 7? We should be two things. What? Rooted and built up. Yes. Rooted and built up. What time, listen, one thing about Christian life is a lot of us, even me sometimes, we have a lot to say, but we really never have a practice to give. I'm saying wow. again. Wow. A lot of times Christians have a lot to say. Right. We, we especially can tell you what you're doing wrong. Well, <laughs> but then we lack teaching practical practices in our Christian walk. Yeah. So I'm going to ask you guys, we're going to help one another. Can you guys give me some practical steps that can be taken to be rooted and built up in Christ? There's some practical steps. Anybody, what practical steps can be taken that we can be rooted and built up in Christ? Prayer. The Bible says to pray only in the morning. Pray without ceasing. That means that you should never, you should always be in communication with God. And um, I'm going to go like to read, and I'm really going to put this book on our website if you can. The website and whatever the um, thing, but but practicing the presence of God. Man, practicing the presence of God, just practicing knowing that he is with you always. always. And whatever you do, you should be consulting God. Right. We boy, I'll tell you, know, even me, we're, 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 we are quick to stop consulting God That's in right. situations. Yeah. Whether it's our job, and we get our job, and Christ is on the back burner now. You know what I mean? Right. Or we, even just our minds are everywhere sometimes, except on really consulting God on our next move. Mm -hmm. And what I love is that, oh man, I can't remember his name. He was, like, he was something like a monk. But he said, he had consulted God about picking stuff, something off the floor. Mm -hmm. He said he'd be in service washing dishes, dishes thinking about God. Yeah. He said, but it was a practice. It was a practice. It, will it happen overnight? Not for everybody, no. But it's a practice. Exactly. Right? Exactly. So what is it like somebody said prayer? So yes, prayer. Prayer is a practical step to really being rooted and built up in God. Anybody else? Reading your word. Reading your word. I always tell people, when you stop reading your word, word you begin to lose the battle. And if you stop reading your word and you're not losing any battles, all I'm going to say is examine yourself. Because yeah. <laughs> right. yeah. whether it's mentally, emotionally, spiritually, trust me, you, when you stop reading your word, you stop consulting God and learning more about him, you start losing the battles. And it might not be just that time, but you start to lose it, seriously. Yes, you all got to stay in the Word. You want to be rooted, 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 and built up in God. Read the Word and pray, pray, pray. What's the other ones? I want to hit on that. I see Sister, Doug, um, Sister Smith. 
He said, pray and study the word. It's so crucial to pray and study the word. One thing that I think is crucial that I don't think enough of us hit on is coming to church. Yeah, that's right. Come to church. And the sad part is a lot of us don't say that because so many people have been hurt in the church. Or so, so many people just look at church as a responsibility. Some people look at church as just a, a ritual, you know? But it's something more than that because, like, I may be going through something the whole week, and I may need Deacon Jackson, just a kind word to edify, to build up, you know, or, or just to teach, you know, or something from the pastor, God might give pastor something, you know, it's so sad for God to give pastor something to, to say to me, and I don't show up. God gives pastor a word, you know, that I need to hear, and I don't show up. You know? And so it's so important that we, especially people of the faith who are eating on steak and know God, we have to learn how to treat people. So we can build them up to be eating steak as well. To be so heavily in their word and in God that they want to treat people right. No matter what state they're in. So that's really good to help to be rooted in Christ. Amen? Amen. And those are practical steps. It's not that hard. Nobody's asking you to, you know, take all these tests and jump hoops and go through all the, the fire and hoops, all that kind of stuff. We're just saying, if you want to be rooted and grounded in Christ, the best practical, practical way is to read the word, pray, have peace, and be listen, more optimistic, and really come to church, right? The right family. Amen? That sounds like right. we need to be forgiving. Forgiving. Yeah, that list, that frees up a lot of people. Yeah. Listen to this. We are to be rooted and built up in Christ. Imagine a large oak tree that can withstand the wind, the rain, the snow, even seasons of drought. It is able to flourish because of the strong roots in its system. The roots give its ability and it means to acquire nutrients mm -hmm. and moisture from the ground. What you see above, listen, this trip me out. What you see above ground is only a fraction of the tree. Yeah. <laughs> what you see above ground is only a fraction of the tree. Man. Only a fraction. The most important part of that tree remains underground. <laughs> King David, back in Psalms again, listen, he said, Life is a person who delights in God, flourishes in their relationship with Him, and finds gratification in His love and His laws and um, precepts as this tree that we're talking about, strong and prosperous. That the person is like a tree planted by the streams of the water, which yields its fruit in season, and whose leaf does not wither whatever they do, it prospers. We are to be abound and overflow with thanksgiving and gratitude. It visualizes, listen, in terms like our tree. A tree, this should be listed, a tree that has gratitude produces fruit. All right. Yeah. A tree that has gratitude produces fruit. And that is the natural and visible part of the tree showing that it's healthy. All right. Without leaves, trees look like they're dead. Yeah. <laughs> However, listen, even a dead branch, when trimmed, gives life to the whole. 
In the same way, the Christian life without, excuse me, without thanksgiving and gratitude severely damages the health of the believer. Wow. A life that overflows with gratitude shows fruit, shows maturity, shows where you are at in Christ Jesus. So you also think about that. In your life, whether it's an outward praise or whether it's just an everyday worship, whether it's a continual prayer, whether it's studying your Bible, what kind of tree are you? And what kind of praise are you giving to your God? I'm going to ask some questions and then we're going to go ahead and um, start our prayer. Listen to this. And I'm just asking these questions. You don't, this, these are personally for you. Something to make you think. Do you ever literally just sing and shout and sing to the Lord? Is it easy or difficult for you to remember to thank God? What do you thank him for? What do you do to keep your expressions of thanksgiving from becoming dry? Or a boring routine? If you could see yourself through God's eyes, do you believe he would feel that your life and your words are an adequate expression of thanksgiving to him? What do you need to do differently in your life? to demonstrate that you are truly grateful to God. What I want us to pray about is that we live every day with a thanksgiving attitude. Mm. Not for just what God has done, but for who God is. And that in that thanksgiving attitude, we become like a tree that is rooted so deeply in him that on the outside, people are seeing a healthy tree with leaves and fruit. Amen? Amen. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and close. I thank y'all. Um, now I'm going to ask Brother Richard to start calling off the prayer request. Amen. Just organizing those. Thankful for all those who tuned in on both YouTube and Facebook tonight. Um, and for our prayer request, we have uh, Lena Jones, Natalie Gibson, Avery Smith, Bonnie and Delbert Thomas, Phyllis Jackson, Joan Bullock, Mildred Washington, the Gibson, Wiggins, Westerfield families, the Harrison and Smith families, uh, Brother Keyshawn Pack and the Pack family, uh, Deacon William Pack, Sister Bernice Pack, the Womack family, uh, all of our union family, uh, uh, the Roberts family, Diane Campbell, Tiana Wood Banks, Holmes, Almer and Lee families, uh, Crystal Robinson and family, Solomon and Valoria families, Pamela Cooper, uh, Sister Larkins, Liz Larkins, uh, Sister uh, Lena Gibson, uh, Rochelle, uh, Bailey, uh, the Evans, Powell and McDaniel families, uh, Deacon War and family. Just double checking to see if we received any other ones. And again, just all those who uh, tune in with us tonight on both Facebook and YouTube, and we'll do so throughout the week. Amen. Thank you, Richard. Before I pray, I want to challenge everyone who's watching, who was watching, and who sent any prayer requests in. When you see those prayer requests, if you have access, as a matter of fact, even the prayer requests that you put in, especially for someone else, if you have access to them, ask them what they need. Touch them and pray with them. You know? I don't want to forget the habit to be writing them down just to get it off of our back. But I want us to really be in intentional about our prayer request. Can we be, and I'm going to start, I'm start reading that. Let's be intentional about our prayer request. You know? And um, what I would love to see is the results. <coughs> of the prayer request because we were doing something and not just trying to get off our back or just be saying something. But to really be intentional about who we want to pray for, what we want to pray for, and why we're praying. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right, let's go ahead and bow our heads and turn. Dear Heavenly Father God, we thank you right now for all that you have done. For all that you are doing and all that you will do. God, I thank you right now just for the union family, God, and all who participated 
God in our worship, God in our Bible study, God. Just enjoy him with family, God. God, I ask you now in the name of Jesus, God, that all these prayer requests, God, that you just start showing yourself strong, God, in our lives. God, I pray to equip us, God, with anything that you need us to do to be obedient, God. That, God, that even our prayer requests, God, that we can see it, God, because we know, God, you are working not only in it, but through us. God, I pray right now that you just give us strength. God, I pray right now that we um, pay attention, God, and really focus on the Holy Spirit, God, that lives within us. God, that Holy Spirit, God, that gives us the gifts, God, that we can work out, God, all these things we're praying for, God, because we have the power, God. God, we have the power because you are the power, and you hold all power in your hand. God, I ask that you just keep us, God, through this pandemic, God. Yeah. I pray that you just keep all the sick, God, touch our bodies in the name of Jesus. God, I pray that you encourage our minds, God. Some of us, God, are just going through, God. God, I pray that some way, somehow, you just spark some encouragement within our spirit, God. That we may jump up, God, with that, that optimistic spirit, God, that praise spirit, God, that worship spirit, God, just to thank you for all that you have done. We love you, we magnify your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, thank you guys. We'll see you guys Sunday at 11 a.m. Amen? Amen. Amen. Amen.